Today we're going to talk about crank trigger ignition systems and their benefits and how to install them. Innovators West has the option of integrating the crank trigger magnets into the harmonic damper front cover itself. This allows you to not have to mount a secondary crank trigger wheel to the front face of the balancer, thereby offsetting your accessory pulleys or anything bolted to the front face of the damper. The crank trigger ignition system is comprised of several components. The first being the magnets, the crank trigger bracket, as well as the crank trigger sensor. We offer our applications where it mounts on the passenger side as well as the driver's side for many engine combinations. This particular LS application has the bracket mounting to the passenger side. The bracket here bolts into the timing cover locations on the bottom two bolts. The transducer slide bracket then bolts to the main bracket and your sensor screws in through the transducer slide. In order to set up a crank trigger system, you will first install your harmonic damper, rotating the engine over to top dead center. On a carbureted application, you will then rotate the harmonic damper over to the maximum amount of timing that you may run in this engine. For instance, some applications are in the 35 to 40 degree range. For electronic fuel injection applications, you'll need to contact the manufacturer to see what the recommended crank reference angle is. A lot of times this is in the 50 to 60 degree before top dead center range. For either the carbureted or EFI applications, you'll rotate the harmonic damper over to the crank reference angle or maximum timing in carbureted applications. Once you have your harmonic damper in proper position, you may then grab the transducer bracket, loosen the bolts, and slide the bracket upward or downward in order to align the tip of the magnets with the center of the sensor. Once the magnets and sensor are aligned, you can then tighten the bolts down. Once your transducer bracket is tightened and your magnet matches the sensor, you will then set the air gap, which is the distance between the end of the magnet and the end of the sensor. You can loosen the lock nut on the sensor and screw the sensor in. The setting for this is typically 40 thousandths to 80 thousandths. Using some feeler gauges, we've set this gap at 40 thousandths. You'll insert the feeler gauges and screw the sensor in until it touches. Once you have your gap set between 40 and 80 thousandths, you can then remove the feeler gauges and tighten down the lock nut to prevent the sensor from moving in the future. You are now ready to start the engine to check the timing. Once you have started the engine, you can then attach a timing light, checking the timing shown on the damper. Oftentimes it will vary slightly from the amount of timing that you desire to what is shown on the damper. On a carbureted application, you can then adjust the transducer slight up or down slightly to match the timing requested with the timing shown. On the electronic fuel injected applications, this is oftentimes a setting within the software that you can go in and change the crank reference angle to make sure that you see the exact amount of timing that you expect on the damper as in the computer. If you have any questions concerning the setup, installation of the crank trigger ignition systems, please give us a call at any time. <music>